story of the Negro in America is the story of America. It is not a pretty story. What can we do? Well, I am tired. I don't know how it will come about. I know that no matter how it comes about, it will be bloody. It will be hard. I still believe that we can do with this country something that has not been done before. We are misled here because we think of numbers. You don't need numbers. You need passion. And this is proven by the history of the world. The tragedy is that most of the people who say they care about it do not care. What they care about is their safety and their profits. The American way of life has failed to make people happier or make them better. We do not want to admit this, and we do not admit it. We persist in believing that the empty and criminal among our children are the result of some miscalculation in the formula that can be corrected. That the bottomless and aimless hostility which makes our cities among the most dangerous in the world is created and felt by a handful of aberrants. That the lack, yawning everywhere in this country of passionate conviction, of personal authority, proves only our rather appealing tendency to be gregarious and democratic. To look around the United States today is enough to make prophets and angels weep. This is not the land of the free. It is only very unwillingly and sporadically the home of the brave. I sometimes feel it to be an absolute miracle that the entire black population of the United States of America has not long ago succumbed to raging paranoia. People finally say to you in an attempt to dismiss the social reality, but you're so bitter. among them that American blindness or cowardice which allows us to pretend that life presents no reasons for being bitter. Is this the night that love finally 
you cannot lynch me and keep me in ghettos without becoming something monstrous yourselves. And furthermore, you give me a terrifying advantage. You never had to look at me. I had to look at you. I know more about you than you know about me. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. History is not the past, it is the present. We carry our history with us. We are our history. If we pretend otherwise, we literally are criminals. I attest to this. The world is not white. It never was white. Cannot be white. White is a metaphor for power. And that is simply a way of describing Chase Manhattan Bank. I can't be a pessimist because I'm alive. To be a pessimist means that you have agreed that human life is an academic matter. So I'm forced to be an optimist. I'm forced to believe that we can survive whatever we must survive. But the Negro in this country, the future of the Negro in this country is precisely as bright or as dark as the future of the country. It is entirely up to the American people and our representatives, it is entirely up to the American people whether or not they're going to face and deal with and embrace this stranger whom they rely on so long. What white people have to do is try to find out in their own hearts why it was necessary to have a nigger in the first place. Because I'm not a nigger. I'm a man. But if you think I'm a nigger, it means you need it. The question you've got to ask yourself, the white population of this country has got to ask itself, North and South, because it's one country, and for a Negro, there's no difference in the North and the South. There's just you know, a difference in the way they, in a way they castrate you. But, that's, but the fact of the castration is the American fact. If I'm not a nigger here, and you invented it, and you, the white people, invented it, and you've got to find out why. And the future of the country depends on that, whether or not it's able to ask that question. <laughs>